This is Tom from October CMS. In this video, I want to give you a brief overview of October CMS Taylor. Taylor continues our tradition of making simple tools for web developers, and it brings us one step closer to fulfilling the October CMS vision. To make web development simple and prove that making websites is not rocket science. Taylor is going to be a core feature of the platform, available out of the box right after you install the system. With that being said, Taylor is in the early stages of development. We plan to release Taylor functionality in several steps so that you can start using it sooner. So what is Taylor? Taylor is an elegant solution for one of the fundamental challenges in website building. Managing the website content. We have seen many solutions to the problem. Most of them require coding or using third-party plugins. And many of the solutions are hard to extend. As a basic example, Let's consider a simple website with a blog. You can use the RainLab blog plugin or any third-party extension to implement a blog, but often your clients want to have features that don't exist in the standard plugin. For example, each post must have the author's name, photo, brief bio, and links to the author's social networks. Implementing those features could take hours of coding. With Taylor, it would take minutes. And here, I mean not just adding the author's bio to posts, but creating the entire blog management solution from scratch. And all this without creating database tables, defining model classes, or coding backend controllers. All you need is to provide blueprints. Blueprints are YAML files that define data structure and user interface. At the moment, the only way to create blueprints is to write them manually, but in the future, they will be manageable with visual tools. There are three types of blueprints, sections, collections, and globals. Sections define content sections of the website, like the blog. Collections define common data, for example, blog authors, and globals define the universally available bits of content and configuration, for example, the website footer content. Now, I will show you how to add the blog functionality to a website. First, I will define the blog section. To do it, I'm creating the blog.yaml file in the Blueprint sections directory. I need to define several common values here, as the name of the section, its handle, and its type. I'm also defining primary and secondary navigation. And finally, I'm adding the content rich editor field. Taylor applies blueprints when we run the October migrate script. From the command line output, I see that Taylor successfully migrated the schema. Let's see what happens if I refresh the backend page. The new blog item has magically appeared in the main menu. Now I can try to create a new blog entry. Everything works as expected, except that for the best user experience, I'd like the content field to fill the entire tab area. It is simple to achieve by making the field size adaptive. It looks much better now. Let me quickly add the excerpt field, because it's a common feature for blog solutions. I'll also add the featured image field. The remaining part is the post authors. Authors should be a Taylor collection, so we need a new blueprint. I'll create it in the Blueprints Collections blog directory. Defining a collection is very similar to defining a section. I need to assign a name and define navigation and fields. I can link the Authors collection to the blog post section. Let's run the migration script one last time and refresh the backend screen. As you can see, I can now create authors on the Authors page and select them from the blog post editing page. I hope you enjoyed this brief Taylor overview.
It doesn't cover some other great features. For example, the support of drafts and versions for entries or blueprint mix-ins. I also didn't explain how to access blog posts on the front-end pages. It will be covered in the next video about Taylor. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date on all future videos.